my name is Jacqueline, this is Leila, and welcome to Revit News. <laughs> So, the new Revit 2020 version has released and I'm very excited to be here with Leila who's a technical specialist at Oldes. You might know her from previous videos that we did together and she's going to take me through all the cool new features, the improvements, the developments that come along with the new Revit version. So, um, why don't we start and you tell me what your biggest highlight is with this new Revit 2020 version? Well, that's definitely the PDF functionality. So that's something we have all been waiting for since a yeah. long time. Uh, the possibility to link a PDF directly okay. to Revit, to use them uh, when you start the modeling uh, on based on a PDF which you have received. Um, and um, that's something that's um, yeah cool new in Revit 2020. So does it work? Does it have the same functionality is just like the cap formats, so can you snap, like, does it recognize the geometry? Yeah, if it's a vector-based PDF, mm -hmm. of course, then uh, you can activate the snapping and then you can really use the PDF uh, even with uh, the fixed line tool or with the okay. align tool uh, yeah. to build up your model. Nice. Great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super cool. That <laughs> That's cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, what else? Well, um, talking about the PDFs, yeah. you can also save them on the BIM360 drive, which means that if you're working in a team on a project, then you can use uh, the PDFs which are stored in the cloud and everyone from, from the team can okay. access them and doesn't lose the links. Yeah. And the same is also valid for the pictures uh, okay. that you insert into Revit. So uh, the images can also be stored now on the BIM360 drive and um, uh, now you can even access some more uh, properties like the scaling, okay. uh, the factor and so on, which weren't there before. So you can resize the images. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's nice. Using, uh, the scale factor. Yeah. But now that we're talking about BIM360, are there any other new developments on the platform? Yeah, there is. A, there has been a lot going around uh, the BIM360 mm -hmm. platform. So the biggest improvements are actually that now you can even uh, save your Revit files directly to the cloud okay. platform, even if they are not work shared. So this okay. has been working uh, since a while, of course, for the work shared files. But now we have also enabled it for uh, files uh, which are not work shared, uh, meaning also for the Revit LT mm -hmm. users. And um, Another handy thing uh, which comes when uh, talking about that is that uh, the publishing um, process is now a lot more simple because in the past um, you would need to enter uh, the dialogue uh, to publish uh, the file and now mm -hmm. you can do it from the Revit start screen mm -hmm. without even having uh, to open the yeah. okay. Revit file itself. So it's a lot easier and uh, yeah. more convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but let's go back to the modeling. Um, what has changed just in the general Revit user interface? Yeah, there is um, another very nice improvement which has been on the wish list for a long time that is the elliptical wall okay. tool. So now you can model the elliptical walls, um, which yeah. seems like simple, but <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, um, well, it's, it's perfect, right? Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> nice. Anything else? Yeah, uh, when it comes to modeling, uh, maybe another mention about the possibility to work better with um, imported geometries. So mm -hmm. when, you, when, when working with free forms or also with uh, bridges, for example, yeah. you will, will import a geometry which comes from another mm -hmm. uh, modeling software uh, as a direct shape, uh, which what it used to be in Revit like a a static a geometry you couldn't uh, change yes. and work with exactly. and now you are able uh, okay. to turn it into a part and work with it and uh, and, yeah. and edit uh, the geometry. So that is a big step towards uh, open BIM, right? Yeah, actually. Because, because it makes it easier to not only import but also uh, reuse the geometry yeah. from other That's software. cool. Yeah. That's good. Uh, the second highlight um, I would like to mention is the path of travel, which is really mm -hmm. a great tool when uh, creating escape routes and um, okay. and working with the model because there you can simply select uh, two points in the building and um, the tool will calculate for you uh, the path. Oh. You need to go uh, considering um, the objects like the furniture and so okay. on and of course always uh, 
going through the doors. Okay, so you can do a whole analysis of yeah. of paths and of walk walkways yeah. through it like integrated in Revit without needing any other software. Exactly. Oh, that's, and that's um, cool. you can also use the settings um, mm -hmm. to for example exclude the furniture if you say okay the chairs are not really something that is um, hindering the way out okay. and you can uh, uh, use uh, the settings to yeah. exclude this and you can also use the view filters to um, to indicate uh, using uh, colors uh, when okay. the path is getting too long. So for example, if ah. the path is mm -hmm. longer than 30 meters, yeah. then the line will turn red, for example. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, I think that's a huge, I think a it's huge a great new feature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to mention when it comes to modeling and I think another very nice improvement uh, we should mention is also the materials in okay. Revit 2020. So we have improved the materials a lot, so you can create a very nice renderings using these okay. materials. And uh, also the material editor has been yeah. um, improved because okay. it is kind of messy, you know, you always uh, need to think about where do I load the new materials, where, where I can find the library, and that has been a simplified a lot as well. Okay, so now that you mentioned uh, materials and renderings, maybe you talk about um, plans and generals and documents. Uh, is, uh, has there any, been any changes? Yeah, there, there have been some um, improvements about the annotation and also um, especially when it comes to including the scope boxes in the View lists. Okay. So now it gets it, it is a lot easier to manage large uh, projects where you need to use the scope mm -hmm. boxes for the regions um, on the drawings. You can now list them in the view list and uh, manage them uh, more uh, more easily. And then maybe another small improvement, but still uh, very handy, yeah. is the possibility to copy the legends across okay. uh, the sheets so you are able now to reuse the legends easily. Well, that saves some time. To yeah, work. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamo. My favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what has, what has changed? Yeah, the big change is now that with Revit 2020, Dynamo will ship together with Revit. So, of course, it was also um, included in the previous Revit versions, but now it really ships with Revit okay. 2020, which means that when you update Revit 2020, the Dynamo will update as well, so yeah. you don't need to update. So you always, well. the yeah, you always of, get the news version. Yeah, you always get the news version. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a great thing. And then another improvement is also um, dealing with steel. So if mm -hmm. you if you are working with steel structures, now there are special nodes. Um, especially uh, for the steel uh, connections which, yeah. which, which make it a lot more easy to place them in the model and uh, okay. to, to work with them. Talking about steel, um, I know also a lot of Revit, uh, people like Revit Structure um, modelers are watching the videos, so what has changed in the steel and rebar world? Yeah, so um, I was a little bit nervous about this question. <laughs> I know you wanted to ask it, and I, as an architect, I'm always yeah. a little bit careful when talking about these things, so forgive me if I say something, <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> something <laughs> wrong. No. Um, so there, there have been a lot of um, improvements around steel and rebar. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to mention is the possibility to now group and configure the steel connections mm -hmm. in a great way in Revit, so you are really able to reuse them in the projects and you are also able uh, to copy them um, and propagate them to other um, uh, to other locations which okay. have the same uh, conditions, like the same uh, type of, um, of beams uh, yeah. adjoining uh, together and then you simply say propagate and then uh, the connection will uh, replicate itself okay. from all the beams. Cool. So I think it's a yeah that it's seems, a very handy thing. That seems yeah. handy. <laughs> Even yeah, for an architect, I can understand it. <laughs> and then it saves a lot of time. Yeah, for rebar we also have a similar improvement. So when you uh, create um, rebars, you are now a lot uh, you are now able to copy them um, a lot more easily. And for example, if you have a column um, and then you want to copy the rebar to similar. Columns, then the rebars will adapt to the form and 
and you can use uh, the align tool to pick the um, the borders a lot easier than it was in the past. So I think that's a great improvement as well. And also the fact that you can now uh, re uh, reinforce uh, the in-place stairs, mm -hmm. uh, which um, are used uh, quite a lot when you are modeling uh, freeform yeah. stairs or some non-standard stairs, which we architects also like to do, so uh, <laughs> the structural engineers that need to, uh, <laughs> to figure out how to, um, to work with that, to reinforce them, now you can reinforce those okay. in place stairs as well, so I think that's a great yeah, yeah. improvement as well. Cool. Yeah, I think there are a lot of small things as well which have been improved, but I think those were the highlights. Yeah, and cool. Yeah. And then I have some more uh, some questions from my Instagram user side. Um, I asked them what they would be interested in and maybe we can quickly just yeah, go sure. through them as well. So somebody asks, um, are there improvements uh, for the landscape, as for the tool for landscape design about triangulation of surfaces? So, um, a Revit is not really a great tool for landscape yeah. design because yeah. it's not, it's, you know, it's made for buildings. So, yes. uh, I think um, uh, what makes more sense is to work or to think about workflows between Civil 3D, which is a great tool mm -hmm. for uh, topography and Revit. And uh, what we have been working on la uh, the last year is um, uh, the possibility to reuse the uh, topography you create in Civil 3D yeah. inside of Revit. Okay. And there is um, a great workflow which you may uh, maybe also can link in the uh, description for this video where you can link uh, the, the, Re uh, the Civil 3D uh, topography inside of Revit using a BIM 360. So okay. it will be recognized and you can really uh, use it uh, and see it inside of Revit. Um, and you can even insert uh, the building paths and everything okay. so it will react. Okay. Uh, maybe that's connected. Somebody else asked uh, about integrations with InfraWorks, Civil 3D and 3ds Max. Well, I think that's a huge uh, topic. InfraWorks and Civil 3D um, have uh, great workflows to work together and when it comes to 3ds Max usually it's about visualization yeah. and uh, maybe also VR. So uh, that is a huge uh, topic and I think we already have quite some resources about that. So I could just um, suggest I give you some yeah. links and uh, maybe we can yeah. um, in the future create um, mm -hmm. a video as well. Yeah, no, 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 okay, yeah. yeah, sounds good. And then the last one, what about IFC4 workflows in the future? So I think IFC4 is already um, like you can already import IFC4 files in Revit? Yeah, you can import and export them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is um, a part of Revit which is currently being also certified. So uh, we are working on getting the certification by the Building Smart. And of course, uh, the IFC in general is being uh, regularly improved. So yeah. uh, that's actually a workflow which which will keep also so moving in the future. So IFC 4 will be a part of the future of Revit. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. So that was it. And um, well, thank you for taking the time. You're welcome. If you want to see more of Leila, I think you already also have your own blog, don't you? Yeah, um, I blog, but I don't blog that regularly. I'm mostly in German, but I blog oh, okay. on bimmeup.com. Dot com, so yeah. all the trackies outside. <laughs> <laughs> so I will put uh, the link to that in the description box as well. And then I guess um, we see each other when the 2021 20, version yeah. comes out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Looking forward to that one already. <laughs> so 